Hey, Weather Warriors. In this video, I'm talking about a big pattern shakeup that could be occurring across the United States and Canada here as we head towards mid-December. I'm going to be talking about some new storms to watch out for. I'm going to talk about temperatures and much more. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns just like this, much more detailed than you see on the old TV. And comment below, have you seen any big snowstorms yet this season? All right, guys, so we're looking at the current pattern right now. And it has been extremely consistent here. This is the just below the jet stream. It's measuring the height anomalies. So measuring kind of the expansion and contraction and temperatures in the atmosphere. And really what this is, it's, it's a lot of heat, a big heat dome, lots of ridging. You typically get warm, dry conditions when you're under that dome. It's where you see this conveyor belt. It's kind of the jet stream where you start to see it turn to the north. That's typically where you get your storm system. So out kind of in the southeastern United States, there's a big old storm out there exiting the northeastern United States. So we've been kind of in this pattern for a while. This is a little bit newer, but the west coast and central U.S. just hasn't seen a whole lot of activity. You can see the temperature anomalies uh, right around now. A little bit cooler than average behind that storm system, a couple degrees, few degrees, but extremely warm in south uh, central Canada. You're talking temperatures 20 degrees plus above average. Much of the central and western U.S. average to about 5 to 10 degrees above average. And uh, current temperatures out there, 50s or so in the plains, southeastern United States, 60s and 70s. Kind of cool in the mountains, but still above average and pretty cool in the northeastern United States. But... Pretty uh, inactive right now. Look at the U.S. Nothing is going on, but that could change. And I'll go over that in a second. Some big uh, changes potentially. This is the thing we're going to have to watch here. This is the Arctic Oscillation. You can see right now it's you know early December. But really prior to this, it's in the positive. But look what happens right after around now into mid-December. So it goes into the negative and stays there for a while. Well, what do you get in a negative phase? Well, when you get it to stay like that for a while, you can get this type of look. This is a positive phase. This is the jet stream. It's kind of a flat jet stream. There's not a whole lot of curvature. When you get that curvature, you get that divergence, which causes lift at the surface, which essentially makes these low pressure systems. And so negative phase is indicating very troughy conditions. You also can get Arctic outbreaks and potentially some polar vortex activity, which I'll also go over at the end of the video here. The NAO is also potentially going to go a little bit negative, but flatline just a little bit. Usually that delivers the East Coast a lot of activity. The PNA is kind of flat. Now I'm going to talk about that polar vortex here, and then we'll go over the maps day by day. There's a little bit of stretching in the polar vortex up there, which could indicate that it could slide off sometime this winter. It still needs a little bit more stretching and, and, and interruption to go, uh, but uh, we'll have to watch that. So we're going to take this every couple of days now and look at the storm tracks and all of that that track up the United States. This is the 9th of December around 1 p.m. So each of these days, we're going to look at 1 p.m. You can see a cutoff low here. This is essentially a piece of energy that's cut off of the main jet stream to the north. So that usually delivers some showers and activity, but probably off the coast. And uh, you can see that divergence that I was talking about. But a big old heat dome. But notice the heat dome is weakening up here in Canada. So there is this heat dome is finally getting kicked to the east. You can see that trough exiting. So stuff is going to change for the northwestern United States and the central U.S. here. You can see temperatures really warm up here on the 9th for the central U.S. Temperatures 15 to 20 degrees above average. Cool in the northeast still from that exiting trough and pretty warm in the west coast as well. That's going to happen before we do get that trough to come in that ridge has to get shuffed shunted to the east so it will briefly warm up for the central u.s you can see look at that temperatures december 60s 70s and even maybe even 80s down there in texas central plains it's going to be spring-like conditions for the plains here as we head towards uh you know wednesday and uh cool in the northeastern united states but still because of that dome that we were talking about there's no activity there's no curvature in that jet there's not a lot of upper level divergence, so very, very boring weather, but pretty warm weather. So pretty nice weather out there. Southern Canada a little bit. This is the thing we're going to have to watch up here. There's a little bit of a change up there. So you'll see as we head towards the 10th. So dramatic change within a day or two here. 
and you can see this little piece of energy right here it's actually starting to get into that main jet again okay so you can see those lines are not closed off so that's something we'll have to watch this is the piece of energy we're really going to have to watch so troughing now in the west coast that's going to deliver some storm systems and you can see that divergence i was talking about your coldest temperatures typically happen on the northwest side of these little waves even though it looks cold there at the surface it's actually cooler a little bit farther back lots of ridging out here and again your storm systems typically occur halfway between the ridge axis and the trough axis so there could be one maybe up there somewhere and then maybe another one out here maybe maybe more like out there actually so we'll have to look at that real fast here on in a second but we'll look at the temperature anomalies you can see on the 10th here, 1 p.m., pretty warm, still a few degrees above average, but cooler than average to the northwestern United States. A few degrees, so that'll be a nice relief. Unless you're in the upper elevations, obviously it's cold, but you can see the temperature is a little bit cooler here, but not still pretty warm here. It's 60s, 70s, to the southeast half of the United States. The Dakotas and north central U.S., it's a little bit cooler, 30s and 40s. Here's that storm system I was talking about, and yes, we do. We see a low here, and then one out here delivering precipitation. So southwestern United States, Arizona, New Mexico, that system we're going to have to watch as it moves east. And then this system rolling on to the northwestern United States, we're going to have to watch as well. There could be, and stay tuned a couple slides from now, there could be a big storm here in the central, midwest, maybe even northeastern United States, with this type of pattern coming in. Here it is. You're talking about the 12th now at 1 p.m. Some ridging building back into the southwestern United States. Like I said, that area was going to have drier conditions in my winter forecast than average, and that's a classic looking pattern there. Still a little bit uh, cool up there and maybe some activity in the northwestern United States, but this big wave here is something we're going to have to watch as we go towards Saturday and into Sunday or so. Again, your, your activity is going to be somewhere kind of in this region between that ridge and that trough axis. So look for a potential storm. Now, this is going to change a bunch still, but there has been consistency on a potential storm in somewhere between the interior northeast and the central United States, kind of, kind of where that X located is. And uh, this model is also indicating that your cold temperatures could swing in behind this wave. And uh, as you can see here, look at those temperatures. So you got a powerful low pressure system up here. Look at that cold front right there. Strong fetch of warm moisture. So it's going to change dramatically in the East Coast. It's going to warm up 10 to 15 degrees above average. Southeast Canada. Yes, that's going to be really warm up there. But that low pressure system, we're going to have to watch the backside. You can see finally we get a bit of a, a little bit more of a polar air mass to finally work in. It's been a while. And uh, when you get that clash, you always have to watch out for that snow on the back side. And we'll look at the uh, the actual precipitation here in a second. But look at that. There's that 32 degree line. This is 1 p.m. on the 12th. All the way down into Nebraska, Iowa and north. You can see the cold front. The main cold front is out here still. But it does take a little bit of time for that second piece of uh, cold air to move in. So it'll be close. There's an occlusion up there, so maybe some snow on the backside, but again, pretty far out. It's going to warm up for the southeastern eastern United States Tuesday or uh, Saturday, excuse me, and then cool down on the back side. And there you go. There's that storm system. This is something we're going to have to watch. Multiple models been consistent with multiple runs at a powerful large storm system. Again, it's too far out to tell strength timing and how much snow you're going to get, but it's something that we have to look at because there's been a consistent signal with multiple models within the Midwest region in particular. Still a system, like I said, out in the Northwestern United States. So lots of uh, much needed rain and precipitation out there. There's a big drought in the Western United States. And then we get this system out here. It seems like it's been really boring in the Midwest and particularly Central US. And so maybe some shaking up could occur towards mid-December. Here's the 14th at 1 p.m. That trough moves into the east, still ridging in the west, still some divergence up there in the northwestern United States and southwest Canada, extreme parts of that area. And so plenty of precipitation still up there. Again, the cold's going to be farther to the west, so probably not overly cold, but lots of precipitation. Again, this wave moving to the east. Look at now between the storm prior we just had a couple days ago, 
to this one, there's a lot more Arctic air to work with. Still not overly impressive, but, you know, there might be a heightened chance of uh, a little bit more snow here. So we'll have to watch that, especially for the Midwest. You can see temperature anomalies on the 14th. A few degrees below average now for the east half of the United States. West half, that ridge starts moving back in. But again, much different story where you get that precipitation instead of just doming in southwest and south central Canada. You can see temperatures in the northeast up into Michigan, down into Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, and into the northwestern United States, generally in the 30s and maybe even 20s, and uh, much warmer than that south of there. And, uh, you know, as these systems move to the east, sometimes they weaken, and that's being indicative on the, uh, on the European here. Some weakening snow showers as it moves east, but a big, powerful wave in southwest Canada, northwestern United States, Washington, Oregon. So that area is going to light up with activity. Now, again, it's too far out to tell about that Midwestern storm. You know, it could be powerful in the northeast, but right now I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be with this type of pattern. It's going to be more of a Midwest type of event. As we head towards the 16th and beyond, there is more, this is the GEFS now, the average height anomalies troughing in the east. This is more typical of a kind of what I was expecting a little bit for a time period here with that negative AO and with some Arctic air that could kind of funnel south a little bit more than, than usual than we have been seeing with also some ridging in the west. But uh, that pattern kind of holds for a couple more days there. Here's the CPC, the, the 6 to 10 day outlook through the 15th. They're saying warmer than average temperatures in the northern United States and cooler in the south. And then as we head towards the precipitation here, you can see that northwestern United States and north central U.S. lights up with precipitation dry in the central west or central U.S. and uh, southwest. And then very moist in the uh, east half of the United States. That'll change here. As we head towards the 9th, 13th through the 19th, very warm in the northwest part of the United States, except for that temperature swing. I think there's going to be some temperature swings here in the Midwest and Central U.S., a little more activity. So there's going to be a couple of days where it's extremely warm and then really cold, but it'll average out to be above average. It's still not overly impressive cold air for this time of year. And then the precipitation, you can see much above average for Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, below average for the southwestern United States where that heat dome is, and then above average for the northeastern United States. However, I do think that there will be a storm that tracks, cuts up into the Midwest here as we head towards mid-December, somewhere between the central U.S. and the interior northeast, probably, probably somewhere in the Midwest, the way it looks right now. So stay tuned for that, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, share this with a friend, comment below, and we'll see you soon.